All right, everybody, we are here for Women Empowerment Month. I'm blessed to be joined by my girl, Keisha Blois, and she is here to talk about her story. Oh, I like the way I did that. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to go her story. That's the way y'all do it. It's history, her story. You can edit this if you want, but I'm fired (laughs) up. So anyway. (laughs) So Keisha, how are you today? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing amazing. And, uh, you know, it's amazing to have you in the booth. Um, you know, you're here with us and to talk about your story. You know, I'm sure I've heard a little bit of your story when you were doing the BOM. And I know I'm going to learn more today yes. than I ever knew. And I'm actually very excited about that. This is my favorite podcast. So I'm honored to have you on here and I'm excited to learn more about you. Thank you, Mark, for having me. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, too. So. You know, with this podcast, Keisha, I'd love it if you could kind of walk us down the path. You know, wh- who were some of the people that impacted you as you were growing up um, and some of the things you've done that have impacted you to become the woman you are today? Okay. So I was born in the Bronx, raised in Yonkers. BX. Yes, raised in Yonkers. Then I moved to Jersey. Um, then I moved to Maryland. Then I'm back in Jersey now. But really? Yeah. So I did a little. How long were you in Maryland? Probably like two years. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really like it. Got it. But I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know where I'm heading um, next. I'm thinking Cali. You like Cali? I do like Cali. Okay. Well, we like you here in Jersey, so I don't know. Maybe <laughs> not that I have a vote, but go ahead. All right. So the people that have definitely impacted me are my parents. Mm. I'm Jamaican, mm. so I had like a, I had a strict upbringing. Mm. My father was on me. Um, and then education was everything. And then I, I did grow up spoiled. Ha. But that's because I had the good grades, right? So my father had <laughs> he had a plan, right? He said, For every A that you um, for every A that you get, I'm gonna give you I'll give you some money. So I said, Oh, that's when my competitive spirit yeah. came. I was like, let's go. A is equal money. <laughs> yes. I like that. And then he couldn't uh, pay me anymore because he couldn't afford it. But <laughs> that's besides the point. <laughs> but that and that evoked my competitive spirit. Um, with that, I was high school valedictorian. Really? So, yeah, I was. I was the cool, smart girl. I like that. You know? That's pretty <laughs> awesome. That that those two don't always go together, but that's great. Yes. <laughs> and um. One of my guidance counselors, actually, Mr. Walter, he uh, believed in me so much that I applied for the Burger King scholarship in high school, and I won. Wait, first off, that's amazing. Where'd you go to <laughs> high you. school? East Orange Campus. Well, Clifford J. Oh, Scott, campus. then it became East yeah, Orange campus. campus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. I mean, that's awesome. So now, you were the valedictorian of your class. Yes. And that means you had the highest GPA? Yes. What it, was, was, it was a 4.3. Is there such thing as a 4.3? It is. It is Break it that is, down. I don't believe is, you. It is. I've always heard 4.0. Now you're telling me, I want to hear about this. I don't know how to break it down. <laughs> I just know I got a 4.0. <laughs> the campus. I had too many A's, I guess. The campus. Right? Or A pluses, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I am out at that. So t- keep going. Okay. Um, well, okay. Mr. Walters. Then I got, so I won the Burger King scholarship. Mm-hmm. Then after that, I got more scholarships. But it's funny, right? Because I also told my father, I said, Daddy, you don't got to save up for college. And I don't know why. I probably shouldn't have said that. But then I ended up getting a full ride. Makes sense. 4.3. Yeah. So Where, where'd, you, uh, where'd you go to school? I went to Montclair State University. Then I went to uh, um, University of uh, Medicine, Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey. They got call it Rutgers now. <laughs> I do remember that name mm-hmm. somehow, but that didn't they like turn that into a, their medical school or something like that? Rutgers? Uh, I don't or is the whole thing Rutgers? The whole thing is Rutgers, okay, but they got, got different it. departments. Got it. So talk to me about this journey. Um, so after, uh, oh yeah. So that, uh, when I told him that, that's when I ended up thinking that Oh, anything I put my mind to, I could I could get it. I can achieve it. That's what's up. And then I throw the secret in there. I read that. Then I was like, oh. <laughs> on t- how old are you right now? At this stage of your life, how old are you? Hmm. I'm probably like 19. Okay, so you're you're young. Yeah. And you're feeling that confident. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. But thank you to my parents because they instill so much love in me that mm. I feel invincible. That's amazing. 
I know. Right? And you felt like you've been f- like you felt like that for a long time. I did. Okay. They, my, my parents poured into me. They took time and poured into me. And I, I also saw them work two jobs each. So I knew the hustle and bustle, but I also knew that I didn't want to work two jobs. Mm. Of well, work for somebody else. Mm. Put it that way. I was like, I want, I want to be an entrepreneur. I don't know what that looks like, right. but I know I'm not supposed. To, I know I didn't come here to work for somebody else. I'm too smart. Like I love that story. You told the story before um, of that, but before we get into that, you have any siblings? Yeah, I do. How many? Oh, it's eight of us. Word. Yeah. Well, it's eight of us too. So it's not like I don't know. I know that struggle. <laughs> But I'm trying to think, same mom and dad ate? No. Okay, got it. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> no. Same thing. Same thing. So where do you think, did everyone get the same love? Or did you did you receive the love maybe the best? Or were you singled out with the love the most? Me and my youngest brother, my full brother, uh, we grew up with both our parents, and that I would say made a tremendous difference. So I, my other siblings, they didn't grow up with both their parents in the, in the same household, and I think that makes it a, a real big difference because mm-hmm. because you need both. It was all about balance. Like my, mo- I never had to take the bus. My mother picked me up from school. Mm-hmm. Like she made it work. Mm-hmm. And she was she always showed up. Mm-hmm. And then my father, I know he was working hard. I know he was making sacrifices so that we could live the life that we we were living. No and doubt. he poured his heart. Like even now, he's one. He's my why. Like wow, he does what he like. That's my superhero. <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what dad wouldn't want their daughter to say that about them. So that's awesome. Thank you. I mean, I'm I'm thinking about my baby girl right now. Like, how did you? How did he pull that off? I'm lear- I'm learning right now. How did he, you know, come alongside you so much throughout your life that you feel that? His his unconditional love, his tough love. I remember there was a time where he knew it wasn't the best decision for me, but he didn't intervene. And then at the end, he was like, um, some lessons you just gotta learn by yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Are these the men lessons? Yes. Yes. Uh, did you know? Uh, did you know? <laughs> but he was he was always there for me, and I and I he I don't know. He's just so influ- influential in my life. Like that, I'm a daddy's girl. Yeah. Like I was when he's working on things, I'm right next to him. Mm. Like, what you what, what's up? What you doing? Yeah, so. that's a major impact. Um, so now, in this uh, in this part of the story, you're around nineteen twenty in school. What's happening now? Okay, I'm about to. I'm getting ready to graduate, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, what's next? What I'm what I'm about to do? So I ended up going into the ph- pharmaceutical industry. Um, got really good experience. Corporate America, I'm very thankful for that because I learned a lot of skills that I'm able to like transfer and use them now for mm. myself. So I'm always going to be grateful for Corporate America. But I also knew, uh, matter of fact, I, I, had to, I had to learn how to negotiate, right? Oh. Nobody, and I didn't have these lessons because I, uh, my parents, of course they had a cap, right? They didn't, they, they poured so much love and education into me that I they passed the torch. I'm mm. supposed to carry the next steps out, mm-hmm. right? So I'm like, I'm worth six figures. <laughs> 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 and I, I love that. Even, even with, my, <laughs> with my education and my experience, I know I'm worth six figures. But the my paycheck not ma- is not matching <laughs> up, right? So I'm like, okay. So I... I, I, I Worked at one job, left that job, went to another. But I'm like, I could always increase my salary. Mm -hmm. I bet. So after I got my master's, I said, "Hmm, the price went up. Yesterday's (laughs) price, today's price. Price is up. (laughs) (laughs) And, and And I remember like being very... This is when I'm learning how to fast. This is when I'm leaning on God mm, heavy because mm. I want to change. I don't want the I don't want the same lifestyle that I was living, right? Sure. So I'm like, okay. 
I'm gonna, I said, I'm going, going to the interview. I'm gonna throw a number out there. But this is the number that I feel secure with. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, let me see how this works. Mm-hmm. Threw the number out there. Mark, if I knew that they was gonna say that, I would have been to this. They said, <laughs> oh, they said okay. <laughs> you would have threw a bigger number out there. <laughs> I said, this is how it works. <laughs> this is how it works. <laughs> but of course, we don't have these. At, well, at, during um, <laughs> my stage of my life, we didn't have these conversations. Mm. Nobody was telling me like, okay, Keisha, do this in the interviews. I was learning all this on my own. Mm-hmm. I was Googling, mm-hmm. trying to figure it out. That's that's uh, that's one of those things, you know, like trying to go through life with not all the information. There's so many times I've not had the information, mm-hmm. but I had to figure it out. So you're in this professional figuring it out stage, right? Yes. So what happens next? Okay. So when I'm fasting, I'm praying to God, leaning heavy on him. That's when I became a scientist. So I, I need to hear this story. <laughs> Like, <laughs> let's talk about it. A scientist. You might be, you might be. The first scientist. The first you. person that ever told me mm-hmm. that they were a scientist mm-hmm. in my whole life. Mm-hmm. Tist. Like, that's, it's it's so unusual to hear that. Do you, are you with me on that or I'm on my own? No, no, no. I hear that all the time, and it was funny, right? When my mom was alive, she was my biggest cheerleader. So I told her I was a. She would tell people all the time, like, <laughs> my daughter's a scientist, right? I don't even know, like, I know <laughs> what that is, but that's just so weird that people use that term. But I'm in. I, I love it. I was a scientist for clinical research. Got it. So before the drugs hit the market, I was the one behind the scene. Is there another term for that? There's plenty of terms. Yeah, but what would be another term? Study manager. Okay. But God, I like scientists. God, God, yeah. <laughs> God saw a scientist. You know? I like it. <laughs> he gave me scientists. So where, what, what, you know, does this, what number job have you been through? A couple different mm-hmm. jobs at this Abs- point. Absolutely, that's when I learned. Like, I, I'm not worth what they, what their, their tag is not what I'm worth. Mm-hmm. And that's when I knew my number had to go up. And Good. then. Um, learning, going through those different, I th- I guess that was a self worth uh, stage, mm. trying to figure that out. That's a huge stage in life. Mm-hmm. We, I think we all kind of go through that at times. Yeah, like because, and you go through it when you're supposed to go through it. Yeah, it's true. It's 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 like finding your purpose, or you know, doing what am I supposed to be doing? What am I doing here? That you do, you go through these these conscious moments in life. Yes. And then you're finding this. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. So my mom was so excited that I was a scientist. She would tell everybody, I'm like, Mom, okay, chill. You don't got to tell everybody. <laughs> but then um, then I took on, the, the, more, the more people I met and I realized, like, yeah, everybody is they're not a scientist. You should, you should wear this crown. You should roll with that. Yeah. So then the, I felt confident. Then shortly after that, oh, going back to not, I didn't, so I was happy being a scientist. I made I, I was good. Life was good, <laughs> right? Life was amazing. <laughs> and But I wasn't happy. Mm. And when I lost my mom, that's when everything hit me. That's what, I feel like I lost my mom, my back was against the wall, and the only, the only thing you could do is go within. Mm. Nobody else could help. Nobody else could help me. Mm. It was me and God. I had hit the, 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 my rock bottom. Wow. And I was like, you know what? Don't if I don't if I don't help me, I don't know where I'm where I'm gonna end up. Wow. I don't wanna be I don't wanna wake up every morning and I'm sad and crying and you know, asking God to pull me out and then even being mad at God. Mm. I'm like, God, why would you take away my best friend? Mm. My mom called me every day after work. Mm. Hey girlfriend, how's it going? How you feeling? Mm. So when that stopped, mm. I was crushed, Mark. Mm. I was crushed. And um, that's tough. I I realized that I had to help myself. I didn't. I wanted to change this the trajectory. Um, and by give me one second. Take your time. Huh? 
So I realized that I had to I had to make the change. And I was willing to make the change. So I got so I got so frustrated that and it was like it happened little by little. I was I would I would work, I would look out the window and I'm like, God, this ain't it. This ain't it. I don't know what it is. I said, you know, I'm not gonna quit. Mm. You know I'm not gonna quit. This my, sec- <laughs> this my security blanket. You know I'm not gonna do that. I said you're gonna have to do something tre- tremendous. Be mm. careful what you ask for. You're gonna mm. have to do something tremendous for me to move. Mm. So uh, after I lose, lost my mom, I ended up um, realizing that life is too short. Life is too short for me to be unhappy. I only got one shot, mm. and I'm gonna make it worth it. So after that, um, <laughs> I did quit. I did quit. Everybody looking at me crazy, like, how you gonna? How are you gonna quit? My father looking at me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get to that place? Enough was enough. I felt like you know when so many things are happening and they're all happening, and you feel like it's against you, it's resistance. Mm. That's what I felt. I was like, nah, I don't think it's supposed to feel like this. And because it feels like this, it makes me so uncomfortable that I know that I'm supposed to not give up. I haven't given up all the um, all these years, thirteen mm-hmm. years of being in this industry. Mm-hmm. I think this is the time I, I got to let go. Wow. What were you thinking about? Were you thinking about your next step? Were you just thinking about mm-hmm. this? Don't feel right. I I need to just kind of free myself to find. Or did you have something? I kept. Pr- I feel like I have a really good connection with God, and I kept praying, and I was like, I just didn't feel comfortable, and. I said, this is the last, I just had the law, I think it was the last straw for me. Mm. And I didn't have a plan. (laughs) 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 The Omi would never do this. That reflection was real. Yes. (laughs) The Omi would never do this. And I said, okay, I don't have a plan. I'm going to quit. And that's okay. God going, you know, faith over fear. Mm -hmm. God going to catch me. Mm. And with it, so when I quit, a lady on um, Instagram from Cali tried to recruit me for life insurance. Wow. Right? Then I remember um, my homeboy, Justin Brown, uh-huh. he uh, was on social media. And I was like, wait, is Justin, Justin selling life insurance? <laughs> and then I spoke to him. And then he broke everything down. I liked his version better than the lady in Cali. I was like, I don't even know her. Right. I know, I know Justin, so um, and then ever since then, I got I got licensed and I became a part of FFL. That's amazing. So, how long was that from the time you quit being a scientist to finding FFL? Was it fast? <laughs> <laughs> it was two weeks. Oh wow! So <laughs> you do have a close connection with God. It was two, yeah. <laughs> but I was scared straight. Uh-huh. I was like, I. I after I after I sent um, my resignation letter, I was like, um, Keisha, did you do the right thing? What you about to do? Mm-hmm. How you about to pay your bills? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was scary. Wow. But I knew I had to do it, mm-hmm. and I knew I wouldn't grow if I didn't do it. And life ins- life insurance has tra- changed my life tremendously. Like I'm not even the same person anymore. Wow. Like, my mindset is crazy. Mm. It was already on one, right? <laughs> With the law of attraction and, and the secret. But now mm. I feel, I'm like, I'm getting, I'm be, I'm becoming the, the woman that I've always knew I could become. Wow. That's mm. amazing. Can you, can, you, can you detail that? Give some color around that? That's a big statement. Sure. Um, I, so I always thought that, I always knew I was ambitious. I always knew that I could put whatever I put my mind to, I could I can do, right? But I also know the life that I wanted to live. One being flexible, one not work not working for someone else, right? Mm-hmm. And the fact that I can do that now and I basically it became it was a thought, right? So I feel like God gives us, you know, these dreams and these desires and aspirations, but he doesn't he gives it to you for a reason because you can execute it out. That could mm-hmm. be your life. But it's up to you to carry it out. Right. And hmm. I knew that. I always knew that for myself. Like, I could put if I could put my mind to it, I, I could create my own reality. Hmm. Like, all the greats say it. 
<laughs> it got it has to be true. true. <laughs> Abundance is our birthright. Absolutely. I love it. So that's so I know I know I'm here for far greater. I don't know what that actually looks like at in the end, mm -hmm. but I know that I, the more people I serve, the more communities I build, mm -hmm. that I'm a step closer to being the woman that I know I could be in my highest self, at my highest level. I love it. Do me a favor, because I like that statement. The woman that I know I can be at my highest level, at my highest um, self. self. Can you, the women that are going to be watching this podcast, yes. we, are, we are empowering women. Um, can you send a shout out and just kind of look another woman in the face and, and give, her an, give her an encouragement on, because your confidence is on tilt. I'd love for you to transfer some of that okay. to another young lady or sister. Absolutely. If you're feeling down, if you're not happy where you are in your life currently, you don't have to stay there, sis. You don't have to. You can create the life that you've always imagined and that you want to live, but you got to get outside your own way. You got to get outside your own head, and you got to want more for yourself. And... Meditation helps a lot, too. Meditation definitely helps a lot. So um, I think that would be my message. Like, just, you don't, you, at life is, and it's funny, life is a choice. We make our, we make our own decisions, but everything's a choice. You staying where you at right now, that's a choice. You moving forward and transforming into your highest self, that's a choice. Which choice you gonna make? Boom. Yes. Ha, ha. <laughs> but you know what though you say it but you lived that mm. and you live that you know I don't remember hearing you know the, the part of you know you leaving and it taking two weeks to find something else but you've moved throughout your life in that very freedom that you just or get, gave someone else you know so I've always appreciated that about you, you know? I've always appreciated that about you. Just the positivity, the vibe. You're a whole vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. I am, you know? I am right? <laughs> Facts. Facts 100. <laughs> but just like you roll with this positivity, and it's almost like what you said. You just, you just feel like you're going to win, and I appreciate that about you. Um, when you think about 2023 and your goals with Family First Life and your goals to, again, be the woman you're called to be, what do you see in your in your future? I see Hall of Fame for sure. I oh. see a team for sure. Let's go. I see top producer for sure. <laughs> That's what I see. I see me living my best life at Family First Life. That's what I see. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, how often do you think about that? Every day. Mm. Every time I wake up. Because everything's a choice, right? Yeah. Am I going to perform at my highest level today? Mm -hmm. But also giving myself grace. I, so, I'm in between that, right? Mm -hmm. Cause, because I know what it feels like to burn out, and I don't want to do that. So, mm -hmm. I, it's, I feel like we all are own, running our own race. So, I'm going to run mine. Mm -hmm. But I know when I'm slacking. Mm -hmm. I know when I need to to get better. I know when I'm being lazy. I know when I'm not performing at my highest level. What do you do when, when you're in that situation? How do you pull yourself out of that? Oh. Um, it's hard. It's, it's very rare that I'm there because I don't even watch TV. <laughs> 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 I watch TV here and there, but not, mm. not really. Um, when I'm there, I, li I, I put on a, a spiritual podcast. On YouTube, Brian Scott, like he, he, that's my guy. Okay. And he, he talks about a lot of spiritual people, and because it's all in the mind. Mm -hmm. If I could, ch if I could challenge my mind, I'm out of that space ASAP. That's a, that's amazing. Well, I appreciate you so much, and thank you, I appreciate you for sharing your story on the Your Story podcast with us, women. We love you. We appreciate you. We value you. We thank you. Keep doing your thing. Mm -hmm. Keep rocking out. Keep going for it. Keep striving. Appreciate you guys for listening. Thank you, Keisha, for blessing us. Thank you, Mike. God Bye, bless. Mark. Take care. <laughs>